Welcome, single Libra friends. The Tear of My Love, I'm David. We're going to do your Four Pillars singles reading here for the end of May. A special on the beach edition. I'm supposed to say like. I do appreciate everyone uh, subscribing. I can see that 1,000 now, so we can get live. Um, and this is for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Uh, whichever one you relate to the most here. Um, so we're going to look for the one who's right for you, not the next ex problem. Libra's not the next ex wife, ex husband, uh, but uh, we're asking spirit to show us here the one that's right for you. Um, so I look at it, and I, I keep forgetting to mention too, I should say, on Thursdays now is always a Libra Scorpio day here with the singles and the heart spread too. Uh, so we do this, the heart spreads for someone on your mind. This one is, is you're wide open and super single and uh, your soulmate gets to come and land finally because now you've cleared a runway for them. And we're going to meet them and take them out and get to know them here. Um, and um, I pre-shuffled, put a little energy on them here. Uh, Libras and ask in the name of love and light only so as serves the greatest good spirit. What can you tell us here to help us? Reveal as a soulmate of our Libra friends. We're in this uh, end of May time frame here in 3D spirit. Something practical. We want to get uh, personality, some stories, history, personal history. And we're going to look at the emotional nature, the intellectual nature, the sexual and love nature. And I call this uh, lifestyle and core values here, the four pillars of a relationship. This is emotionally six pentacles uh, let's see here and nine of swords okay intellectually four wands hmm. and the fool <laughs> I'm laughing because I kind of like them already <laughs> uh, uh, yeah and they might make you laugh actually <laughs> little jester here this might actually i don't know why i get a little feeling like you know it might be a clown as a side job or something or uh someone that can really let go uh, and uh be entertaining you know i bet they tell jokes and stuff so um, with the six of pentacles and the emotional along with the nine of swords um i'm immediately drawn to the moon here <laughs> Uh, that's got Virgo moon written all over it, which is very triggery. I think a Virgo moon is almost like a trauma point in any chart, honestly. Unless it's like very well aspected, I should say, you know. I hate to make this generalities, but uh, there's a lot of karmic stuff there. And so this someone would be with the nice swords easily triggered, you know. Um, so they might basically have PTSD. That could be. Um, and but it would be something they've been, been dealing with and with the six of Pentacles somehow they can ba bring it into balance and um, they and I see this a lot like this might just be innately in their nature so really I would read mostly like a like a, um, if it's a Virgo um, moon um, you know uh, it may be uh, better aspected I don't know but they seem to be able to bring it into balance um, because underneath in the this is in the deep unconscious position here um, they had trauma in the past you know um, it's sort of like keeping demons down but they seem to be doing a pretty good job of it I get the feeling you know but at one time and maybe periodically it kind of rises up because I think they are very triggery, you know. Um, now, with their mind, um, so I think, like, this is kind of literal. They're all about a love and relationships, you know. This is what's on their mind. I mean, they could literally be like a marriage counselor or something. Um, we'll see what we get in terms of their um, energy. Uh, we get over into their lifestyle uh, and core values to see more sometimes their career but with their mind very solid uh, mind um, in terms of uh, mercury what would that be most like uh, 
maybe like an Aries. You know, Aries can be so intuitive and fast and, and, and on point. Um, too, uh, with their Mercury, particularly if it's well aspected, you know, and would explain the fool, um, because also, uh, the fool doesn't stop to think, does it, I think the fool should be the Aries card, you know, uh, the fool, um, doesn't worry about, does his, does his ass look too big in these pants, the fool just goes for it, you know, uh, with the kind of instinctiveness, and with Aries, they often get it right, you know, I don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, in thinking about it or intuiting it or um, they just act um, and Mars is the ruler. Um, so they might be quick to speak. I think they're funny. They're going to tell a lot of jokes. Um, um, they're, I think they're, they have kind of a mixture of traditional and non-traditional. So I think what this is saying is around love and relationships they're traditional here with the family you know traditional family um and so it, it, it this is their intellect now so it's showing that they're kind of a nuts and bolts a traditional thinker um uh even though it's fire energy you know there's someone that would be uh practically minded um but then it also shows that they're willing to be the fool could be very intellectually curious um very open-minded, so definitely someone that could be in a tarot or anything, you know. Um, they're kind of like, they would, if they don't say when you're with them, I'm very surprised. Uh, I, they probably say it a lot, so I'll do anything once. This is like, I'll do anything once. And you might hear that out of their mouth, okay? Um, your person here. Um, let's see, sexually, page of... Uh, Page of Pentacles. I love that little page. I call them the sincere page and justice. Okay. And then in their core values and lifestyle, two of wands and ace of cups. Wow. So look at their core values and lifestyle. And you know, uh, lifestyle is just uh, how do you want to live uh, all the way from my smoker non-smoker uh, do I want to live in a house or a condo uh, in the mountains on the beach uh, is my life really about work is it more about my uh, family and love life uh, uh, what are you know uh, my core beliefs then become mixed in with that and lifestyle is one of the things in the four pillars to me that can mostly uh stand adjustments like emotionally i think you kind of have to have that basic emotional connection you have to have that intellectual compatibility of course you have to have the sexual and love compatibility so when it comes to lifestyle it might be the easiest place to make the adjustments you know um, um like if one wants to live in a condo one wants to live in a house you have to make some kind of a, a compromise you know um but this person, it shows me someone that, that they're very uh, oriented towards taking chances um, in terms of like their career and kind of how they see the world. And with the Ace of Cups down here at the bottom, you know, there's two kind of basic ways to look at the world uh, in terms of uh, uh, whether it's like a bounty and like a buffet or whether it's kind of like a desert in this hard place where you, there's never enough. You know, and it's funny because I'm I'm kind of more the uh, <laughs> I'm kind of more the latter, honestly, unfortunately. But uh, it is funny. Like two people look at the same thing, and one will be like, oh, you know, yay, <laughs> and they're one that goes, yay. Uh, yeah, they tend to see the positive. Uh, they're very open to taking chances. Um, I tell you, this is comes in with the fool now, and over here, I like them. I'm laughing because I want to hear their stories. I mean, they can have a lot of crazy stories. I mean, uh, this is someone that's like they might say, uh, you know, I really I watch a video and go, damn, I'm going to jump out of an airplane, and and then they find out you can go, you know, double hook with somebody for uh, 400 bucks at the local airport, and they uh, put their coins together, and the next very next weekend they're jumping out of a plane, you know, with someone. So maybe that story they tell you. Um, and, you know, uh, kind of opportunistic. You know, it's hard to say what they might do. They're, they're just so wide open. And some, 
I think it could be like a renaissance person and just have a lot of uh, talents too with the four wands and the fool. It's being kind of balanced in a fire way um, and, and wide open. And, um, you know, so um, they may have taken in a lot. The person could be really smart too. I haven't said that in a while, but with the four wands and the fool, this kind of balance, someone who's like... Uh, like in a in a quirky way though like uh, you would notice this you would notice as you meet them it'd be like a little uh sheldon like type thing or something you know a uh, way so their mind stands out as being really different and unique you know um they don't maybe say normal things or something uh, uh they respond to things with a very unique like you actually when they talk and say something you would kind of stop and go uh i never really thought of it that way but yeah that I, actually got to make sense you know um um i don't know if i said maybe it could be a sag mercury here uh, which can be like that huh and we could be dealing with a like a capricorn moon aquarius moon or virgo moon something uh like that um or we could be dealing with a virgo moon too but definitely earth and so with the Venus energy, the Page of Pentacles is Capricorn, and um, the uh, Justice is uh, Libra. So uh, we're going to go with a uh, Libra Mars uh, and a Venus and Capricorn person. And the Venus and Capricorn goes very well with their four wands. You know, maybe they don't even know it. Maybe they don't know astrology. They might with the fool. They might be a person who knows a little bit about everything. It'd be great at a uh, doing these uh, games, trivia games and stuff, um, but literally kind of knows a little bit about everything, this person, like anything you bring up, they probably can say, oh yeah, kind of talk about it, know uh, something about it here, um, so you're looking at the Libra, uh, Venus, and a Capricorn March, so Libra is at home uh, here in uh, Venus, and uh, Mars is exalted in Capricorn, so um, you totally explain someone whose mind is on the building of a solid marriage and long-term committed relationship, 100%. Very sincere about that. Um, so in terms of sex, I mean, they're going to be very focused on you, I think, um, and very, let's say, generous uh, lover. And the same way in terms of love, like I think it's like going to be all about you and the family with them and I don't see them at all as being conservative this is not it's all about the family but they are not a trumper or I don't know whatever the connotations are they're not conservative um, they're just care about their love interest and their family first you know um, they, because I think this could be a really radical person someone is very different uh, whatever their beliefs are whatever they do I think there's some kind of entrepreneur. They, they go their own way. The two of wands and the ace of cups follow their heart. You know, they are 100% not working. This person will probably live on the street and probably figure it out. And after living on the street, end up doing something great out of it, you know, before they would uh, get down. And, and uh, this may be a sad son before they'd be yoked down and, and put into a nine to five, you know, work a day world. I don't think they're going to have that, you know. Um, so this brings a, a great deal of balance to this Sagittarius energy. Okay, I'm a Sag. So uh, when you have the Cap uh, Mars and the Libra Venus, it's just about perfect. Um, to bring a Sagittarius uh, uh, into uh, 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 more less reactive, uh, calmer, uh, more likely to commit. I mean, this person looks like someone... You're their soulmate, there's no question, once they find you. Um, but there's someone that would make a real strong commitment. Also, I should say, it's someone they're not going to have a long history of a lot of sex, with different people, because I think they're really focused on these long-term. Another person, I've seen a lot, they, they make their amount of sex they've had may kind of equal the amount of serious relationships they've had. Um, you know, with the ones might stand here or there. We're all human, but... Something like that, you know, very sincere about it. Um, and um, so I hope, um, Libras, that gives you some idea about your person. Join a dating site and look for them. This reading, I should call this the dating site reading. I'd love to work with someone and figure something out for the cost. But um, you get, get, and what I'd like to do is get synastry. 
uh, from you and your person. So this means it probably work best for a woman. You tell the man, like, you know, I need your birth time. If they can't come up with a birth time, then we'll go next and uh, pull this reading and look for the person and uh, look for the sinistry involved and then uh, go and actually find it. So, uh, you know, it would be something I'd be interested in doing. Um, <laughs> but you can do it any way yourself. You know, look at these readings. If you're on dating site, some of this you could probably tell just by talking to people, uh, chatting with them, texting with them, you know, before you even actually met them, I'm guessing, nowadays. Thank you guys, and uh, give us a like, and uh, thanks for subscribing.